Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Jolie and this video is going to be fun. I say that about all videos, but invoice capture, Microsoft has um, a new AP automation um, in D365. It does utilize Power Apps, Power Automate, the Dataverse, AI Builder, and D365. Uh, it is a fully automated process. I'm testing some different scenarios that AP does run into. This one doesn't happen often, but it can happen. So if the vendor sends an invoice in, and in this case, I'm gonna show you that right here. This vendor says Landy, PO number 32. When we go into PO number 32, let me just copy that, put it up here. That PO is made out to Acme Office Supplies. So I wanna show you what would happen in the automation process if this scenario comes up. So for this demonstration, we're going to go into the vendor invoice automation workspace, and we are going to manually import this invoice. So let me close this invoice out and go down into our Power App, which is embedded into D365, and just simply go to Upload Files. Now, I'm gonna drag and drop this invoice over. There. Now you can see it here, and I'm simply going to upload it. I am gonna get rid of my camera. Sorry, guys, but I want you to really see everything in this invoice capture solution. We're gonna add in some columns for reporting purposes that I think you'll like, so I want you to see that. All right, so we have an upload complete. Now here's where I wanted to show you where you can edit columns. So as you need more information, um, you can pull in uh, depending on standard or custom forms within this, within this Power App, you can um, pull in as many columns as you need to, apply, and then we can even come over similar to D365 and save our views over here. I'm not gonna save it because I like the simplicity of the form itself. Now, Microsoft does default on pending in received files, and you can see it's already um, processing. You can also see this is a direct, so that meaning, direct meaning import. If it, was an, if it came from an email, it would say email here because of my configuration. Okay, so it is moved up. Um, really quickly into the captured invoice. So if I refresh this screen, I'm going to see this Landy 008 here. It's in processing. Here shortly, we will see if there's any errors on this invoice. We do have one error here. And so this is a great, again, you can edit columns here. You can add in as much as you need to um, for report, reporting. You can also um, cancel this. We'll, we'll come back to any dashboards as well. Um, up here, I wanted you to, to be able to review some of the dashboards that are available. So we'll come back to that in a later video. Let's go back. I'm going to stay, try to stay focused on this demonstration, which is what to do if the vendor invoice does not match the purchase order vendor. So you can quickly see here that we have an error and it's related to the purchase order. Now, AP isn't really going to know what to do with this. And if you need more room, you can just collapse the links and it gives you a little bit more room here. Collapse the files, it gives you more room. So again, beautiful, you can um, ex make this larger, make this smaller, um, however you'd like, you can make the whole screen, the invoice, well, I thought you could. Oh, this is just turning it. Can you see I'm just experimenting myself? <laughs> I really like the solution. I'm trying to find everything that the system offers for um, any AP team so I can really know, but. But you can see here that the purchase order matches the purchase order here, but it's not correct. Um, there's something wrong and it's really not up to AP to figure that out. So let's send it over to our procurement team to look at. What we can do is go back to the header 
and um, really quickly just share it with our uh, procurement team, whether it be a team or a specific person. I'm going to be the team, the procurement team right now. And I'd like to give um, the, procure the procurement member, I wanna assign it to them so they can actually update it with a new purchase order if they need to. Okay, so now that I've done that, they've received a notification and that would be me. But in addition, it, just to make sure that they receive this invoice, you can always come here and share via an email or you can simply copy the link and go to your email and or go to your team's message and say, hey, I just sent you a invoice. Could you please look at it? Um, but for now, I've logged in and I notice um, the purchase order here has an error as the buyer. So I want to come in and investigate that. I immediately can come into my purchase order and, oh, yeah, I accidentally entered the wrong invoice on my purchase order. So what I'll do on the procurement side is I'll come up here and I will cancel this product receipt. But in this demonstration, there's no, uh, there's no receipt, but I would cancel this receipt. And then I would also come in here and cancel this purchase order. <clears throat> Excuse me. To save time, I went ahead and created another purchase order to replace the incorrect one. Um, we want to make sure it's been received. Yes, so it's been received. This is the new purchase order that is correct. So what we would do is we would start a review as the buyer. We would populate that new purchase order. And then we want to derive and check. We now have no errors on this purchase order. It does not match the invoice. However, it does match the system. So now we can complete our review. And we can transfer the invoice. Now we don't necessarily need to send this over to AP because it's going to go into pending vendor invoices. We're gonna see that up here when we go into documents, not invoice, we're going to see it here in pending vendor invoice. There it is. So now what we're going to see is the automation kick in and start to run these processes. Now, remember, if you're manually um, updating these statuses, you would have to match your product receipts first. And that's what the automation is going to do. After the receipts are matched, it's going to update the match status and then submit to workflow. Now, if for whatever reason something gets stuck or doesn't run and you would just like to do those, those um, items manually, you can absolutely do that by coming into edit and toggling this include and automated processing to no, and then it allows you to match your product receipts. So there is options if for whatever reason the automations did not run. But from an AP perspective, you wouldn't even have to worry about this. The system, the automation will run in the background. I'm gonna push these through to show you how they run. So the, the process automations automatically um, match the receipt. There is a match status failed because at the time when this auto, the first automation ran, now if it gets a failed, it'll try to run it again. Um, up to, I believe, a maximum of 24 times um, to try to get those, um, up those match statuses to pass. Because if you saw in some of my other demonstration videos, if the receipt hasn't been entered into the procurement, so PO has not been received yet, the invoice can still sit here in pending vendor invoices. The automation will still try to run um, up to 24 times to match that receipt. So if the invoice comes in today, but tomorrow procurement receives, it'll catch that receipt. Now we should see this match status in the automation run here shortly. And the automation pulled in both the match status here and submitted to workflow. So in a moment, we're going to see this move out of this queue because the workflow is set up that if it is a purchase order and it has a past match status, 
to go ahead and auto approve and post the invoice. So keep in mind that AP sent this to the procurement team because there was something wrong with the purchase order. The procurement team addressed the issue, transferred the invoice into pending vendor invoice, and the, the AP team never saw it again until they actually make a payment. Remember, Microsoft has an automation for your payments as well. So actually, AP wouldn't see this until they're actually reviewing the payment before they actually make the payment. So I'm going to refresh this and you're going to see it leave here and it's going to be in our inquiries and reports under invoice journals. Oh, we can also go to invoice journal directly from our workspace as well. What I mean by that, there's our invoice. And what I mean by invoice journal is Microsoft has really made this a one-stop shop, the um, vendor invoice automation workflow. And when I say the one-stop shop, let me go back here, is really everything you need to run your AP is here. So you have your links that take you to open vendor invoices, invoice journal, all vendors, vendors on hold, all purchase orders, open prepayment. Now, if you'd like, as an AP, you can definitely search for all purchase orders and try to find uh, purchase orders if you wanted to do investigations. But again, it's not up to AP. You could actually send this over to your procurement team to help you along. I hope you enjoyed this demonstration. There are more to come. Thank you for watching and see you on the next video.